Hello and welcome back to our channel. Today we've got an exciting topic to discuss that will take your Excel game to the next level. If you're tired of dealing with messy data and want to organize and analyze it like a pro, then you've come to the right place. We are going to talk about the fantastic advantages of using tables in Excel. But before we dive in, if you're new here, consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell so you never miss any of our awesome Excel videos. All right, let's get started. So what makes table in Excel so awesome? Let me tell you, but before that, let's quickly see how you can convert your data into a table. Let's work on this data today, which is a sample data of some employees with their first and last name in separate columns and their respective sales figures from January 2023 to July 2023. This doesn't have any formatting whatsoever, seems like it has been exported from some software. To convert it into table, we simply have to select any cell inside the data set and press Ctrl T. You'll get this dialog box and if your table has headers, put a check mark here and hit OK. You are done. It is now a table. Now let's jump to those advantages. Straight off the bat, our first reason to use table is evident. It looks much better than what it was earlier and this you get by default. Have a look here. Every alternate row is colored which makes it a lot easier to read rows upon rows of data. All the columns are automatically resized and gives the whole thing a more consistent and professional look. If you don't like this look, it's pretty easy to change it. Just head to the table design tab on the top and look in this group here, table styles. Click on the drop down here and you have many options to choose from separated into light, medium and dark colors. Further, if you have a look next to table styles, you'll find table style options. We have more options here. First column will make the first column bold like this and last column will make, you guessed it, the last column bold. You can remove the header row from here. You can remove this alternate row coloring thingy and apply it to the columns. This one is also pretty simple but really helpful, especially when you have many, many rows to go through. You will always have the headers visible when you are scrolling down. Without tables, you'll have to use freeze row option to do this. If you remember, when we converted this data into table, filters were automatically added the moment a table is created, which I know is a small thing, but nevertheless quite useful. Since we have filters, sorting the data is also available to us. Just select the option you want and it's there. If you use tab to move between cells, this is quite good. When you reach at the end of the table like this and press tab, it doesn't go outside the table but moves to the next row. If you're a fan of using keyboards like me, for the most part, this is really helpful. I hate it when I have to use mouse to do something in Excel. That reminds me, I have many keyboard shortcuts to share with you all. Probably I'll do a video on them soon. If you have to add more rows or columns to your current table, say we have some sales figures for the month of August as well, and we wish to add them here, simply mention your header in here. In our case, August 23 and Excel will automatically include them into this table. Same thing with the rows. If you wish to add another row, simply press tab on the last cell or start typing in the next row and it's added in the table. You can also manually expand your table. If you have a look at the last cell in the table, this one here, you'll find this teeny tiny inverted L type shape. Bring your mouse on it and the cursor turns into a double-sided arrow. Now you can add columns or rows by moving this outward. Just remember, you can either add rows or columns in one go. Can't do both by moving it diagonally. You can also exclude columns or rows by moving this arrow inwards. You can also change your table by going into the tab named Table Design and then here under Properties, we have an option resize table. Click on it and you will have your table highlighted with this marching ants type of visual. You can increase or decrease the size of your table by selecting the cells from here. If you know, you can name a range yourself. With tables, you get it automatically. If you go to table design tab, under properties group, your table will have some name already. You can change it to anything. Let's change our name to sales. 
There are many benefits to naming your ranges or tables. And the most important, according to me, is when we are checking our formulas, instead of getting cell reference like C3 and Z52, it actually shows me what the cell's heading is. Let me show you as far as I'm writing a formula in a table. Let's add a column and let's say we need to use a sum formula. When we select our cell C2, in our formula it shows as at the rate January 23. And if we select all the months, it shows the names of all the headings after the name of our table instead of C2 to J2. This way you know which cells are being used in your formula right away. This also works on your table as a whole. Let's say we are using VLOOKUP somewhere. The moment you select a cell in the table as your lookup value, it says as our table name followed by the column header. This gives you an important advantage while reviewing your work as just by looking at your formula, you know which columns is it working on. You can use sum, average, subtotal, whatever you want. But when using a table, you get these options automatically. Just go to the table design and select this option where it says total row and you get a row with the totals at the end. If you have a look, every cell in this row has a drop down where you can select number of functions like average, count, maximum, minimum and it even has an option where it says more functions. And that's not even the best bit. This row is kind of dynamic. Remember I told you you can move around the table using tab and if you press tab on the last cell here, a new row is added and the total formula row that we added will consider this row in its calculations as well. This is super helpful if you constantly need to add data to your table. You don't have to worry about updating your formula all the time. There is something you should take a note of here. This total here is only for the visible cells, which means if we use filter to hide some of the data like this, the total will also change. Depending on your specific situation, this can be quite helpful. This one saves me a lot of hassle, really. Let's say we have to find the average sales of each employee. Let's do that here in this column. Write a formula, average, select our cells, and the moment we press enter, magic happens. My formula is copied to all the cells in this column, and I don't have to copy and paste it to the end. You can imagine how helpful this could be to you when you are working on your sheets. And that's not even the best part. Just like the totals row in our last point, this one will also include any new data it comes across. Isn't this great? Believe me, tables integrate really well with the other features in Excel. Let me give you two of the most common situations you may come across, pivot table and charts. Let's create a pivot table. By the way, if you don't know how to create one, you should totally check our video on pivot tables. I'll leave the link here and in the description. So, moving on, let's create a pivot table and let's bring our first name in the rows box. Now, let's go back to our main sheet and add a name at the end. You can add anywhere, but for the sake of simplicity, I'm adding it here. Let's add XYZ under first name and now let's go back to our pivot table and refresh it. And here is our new employee with a name like XYZ. If your pivot table was linked to a normal range, you would have to go to this tab here, pivot table, analyze, and click the drop down here, change data source, and then manually add the whole data set again, including the new row. But since we are smart, we are using tables and we let it do these mundane jobs. Same thing goes for charts. Let me show you. Let's first select some of the last names and only a few months to create a chart because our data set has so many names and months, it will be too crowded a chart. Now that we have a selection, let's add a chart by going into insert tab and under charts, let's select this one, a standard 2D column chart. Let's bring it here and expand it a bit. If you have a look, our first name Parsa has January sales as 9,388. And the same is shown here in the chart. Let's change that and give Parsa a sales figure of 20,000. The moment we do that, our chart also updates. Imagine you doing a presentation with a chart on the screen and you can dynamically change the charts to show the projections forecast as you change the values in your Excel table. Pretty neat, right? Well, there you have it. The 
10 incredible advantages of using tables in Excel. From effortless data entry and formatting to powerful sorting, filtering and calculations, tables truly revolutionize your data management experience. If you enjoyed this video and want to master more Excel tips and tricks, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Also subscribe to our channel and hit that bell icon so you're always in the loop with the latest content. Thanks for watching and until next time, happy spreadsheeting.